video we're going to be making a very simple mead using only three ingredients water honey and yeast sometimes known as a traditional mead now to make our traditional show mead we're going to be using the following ingredients we're going to be using three pounds of raw honey we're going to be using one gallon or four liters of filtered pure water we're going to be using half a teaspoon of Red Star Premier Blanc wine yeast. Now, if you don't have wine yeast, this stuff will also work. Just, it'll work a little slower, it'll work a little harder, but it should get the job done. We're gonna need a jug, carboy, demijohn, take your pick, to do fermentation in. We're gonna need an airlock with stopper. We're gonna need a hydrometer, a testing tube, to determine what our alcohol level is gonna eventually end up being and using your sanitizer of choice make sure that everything has been properly cleaned and sanitized and that is all we're going to be using to make this mead now i've taken the liberty to warm up our honey which we're now going to pour into our fermenter Get that in there. Now the next thing we're going to do is add in about half of our water. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly half or anything like that because the next thing we're going to do after that is that we're going to shake this up. Let's put our cap back on. Nice and tight. And let's get to shaking for two reasons. One, to dissolve that honey. And two, to put more oxygen in our mix, which our yeast is going to badly need later on. So it'll take about a minute or two, closer to two. All right, that's enough of that. Go ahead and take our cap off. Let's go ahead and add in the rest of our water. Too about yay high. I'm not going to fill it up to the top because I don't know how much foam might develop later on, at least during the early stages. So I'm going to leave a fair amount of headspace. And I'm going to wait for this foam to die down before adding the yeast. All right, while we're waiting for this foam to dissipate, which apparently is going to take a little while, we may as well do something useful and take a hydrometer reading. And it looks like our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.090. Now, using some of our water from our hydrometer test, let's uh, bloom our yeast. Again, using half a teaspoon, which is more than I normally would use, but because we're not using yeast nutrients, yeast energizers, we're going to give this yeast a pretty good shot. Now that our yeast is beginning to show signs of life, we may as well go ahead and add that to our carboy.
Now before I put on the airlock, I want to give this one last good shake. Take off our cap, put on our airlock. Now let's go ahead and label our creation. We are making a traditional show made. And we're starting it on this date. And our original gravity reading was 1.090. Now for the next three days, my plan is going to be this. Once a day, I'm gonna take off the airlock, put the cap back on, give it a good shake. Take the cap off, put the airlock back on. After that three day period, I won't be doing any more shaking, but what I will do is that I will reduce this headspace that I've got to something a bit more reasonable. And after Oh, about 10 days or so, depending on how much lease has developed along the bottom of the carboy. Uh, if it's about one finger's worth, then I'll go ahead and rack it into a secondary carboy uh, and start the process of bulk aging and let it go on for the next several months. Probably end up doing a total of three rackings until it becomes clear. I will probably let this go 12 months before giving it, giving it a tasting. Okay, it's now been 12 months. It's now time to do a tasting to find out if our traditional show mead has been worth the effort, as minimal as it was. Now, a couple of things that are going to make this tasting a little bit different from what you normally see. Normally, you would see me opening up a bottle that's been, been, been properly bottled and corked and labeled and pasteurized and all of that. Well, not this time. This time, we're going to go straight from the carboy. Time being what it was, I just didn't have time to do all that. All that will be done later. What will be done later again is also going to be one, I'm going to back sweeten it to my taste. Following that, I'm going to degas it. Following that, I'm going to pasteurize it. Following that, I'm going to bottle it, cork it, label it, <laughs> the whole nine yards. But this is going to be straight from the carboy into the glass. And we're going to find out what a traditional mead dry tastes like. Now, uh, just to remind myself, it did start out with a gravity of 1.090. I'm assuming it's gone dry to 0.990, which would give it an AVB of about 13.13% or thereabouts. Uh, this one will, of course, be racked into another carboy prior to doing that whole degassing, pasteurization, back swimming process. So there is a layer of sediment down at the bottom because I have not racked this in five months time. It just got forgotten. Normally I like to rack my stuff every two months-ish or so, but that's what happened here. So we're gonna find out if making it the old style way is worth it. Remove the airlock and with a properly sanitized wine thief. We're going to go ahead and pour us a sample. I'm not too concerned about the headspace that's going to occur or the increase in the headspace that's going to occur because again uh, this is going to be back sweetened. So even after I rack it and this level comes down a little bit more, by the time I back sweeten it all of that will come back. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm going to get my five bottles worth. Uh, let's not make a mess on my table. All right. All right. Um, hmm. Yeah, you can smell the alcohol, and yes, you can smell the honey. Uh, this, when I made this, was just your generic <laughs> Wally World clover honey, nothing special. Uh, I did at the same time make a, uh, just a standard mead using um, orange blossom honey, which I need to bottle and all of that later on, but it's now time to do that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's hazy. It's not totally clear. Um, this was one of the first meats that I started using a uh, homemade uh, yeast nutrient on. Uh, that whole process turned out quite well. Okay, 
that little edit there was my uh, wall clock, my pendulum wall clock uh, chiming off 10 o'clock at night, and I decided to just go ahead and edit that out. But again, it smells sweet, surprisingly. Um, let's find out uh, if this requires any back sweetening at all. Hmm. No, it doesn't. I mean, there is a slight degree of dryness on the tongue, but it has enough residual sweetness such that um, I think I will do a hydrometer reading uh, after I finish this tasting, and I will include that in the video just to find out just how, how dry this actually became. But as it is right now, straight out of the jug, unpasteurized, unback sweetened. That's actually not bad. <laughs> That's not bad at all. I think I'm gonna leave it that way. Um, Yeah, I'm going to leave it that way. Uh, just to prove a point way back when, 12 months ago, if I could just make a mead with just basic ingredients, the answer to that question is yeah. <laughs> uh, even with minimal upkeep, again, not having racked it for a good five months, uh, once I finally do rack it, it still will be pasteurized because I don't use... Uh, I don't use uh, uh, sulfites on this channel, among other things, trying to keep it as natural as possible. Uh, it is going to be pa pasteurized and then bottled and all of that. But uh, in terms of making any adjustments to the recipe, no, none whatsoever. No, 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 none whatsoever. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. I am going to put this hair lock pack on <laughs> until I can dig out the cap for it later on. Um, but yeah, uh, my take on a uh, traditional show mead, unadulterated as it were, using just simple homemade ingredients uh, in terms of the yeast nutrient, uh, it worked. Uh, so again, if you like what you see here, please click on that subscribe and notify button, and I will continue to do these videos on a more regular basis. So until the next video, I'll see you.